I gotta say, what an unbelievable story, right? An un, let's just talk about it. an unbelievable story. It, it's hard to fathom that any one person would lay their life down for a person who betrayed them. Come on. It's an unbelievable story. It's an unbelievable story that Jesus, the friend of sinners, would lay his life down for those who actually killed him. Come on, somebody. He dies for his faith and then raises from the dead. It's hard to believe. It was hard for the disciples to believe. No one expected Jesus, listen to me, we know the story, so it's easy for us to believe this, but in that moment, no one expected Jesus to raise from the dead. In that very moment, again, the Bible wasn't written yet, in that moment, they did not expect Jesus to raise from the dead. They expected a dead person to do what dead people do. Stay dead. Huh? Yes. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look in the Bible, Mark 16, 1 through 5. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, two different people, and Salome brought, brought spices so that they may go down and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the next day, the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked one another, who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away as they entered the tomb. So let's take a look at this passage for a second. They were going to the tomb with spices to re-embalm the body. Uh, the Bible says to anoint the body. They were not expecting to find a risen Lord. If they had expected a risen Lord, they would have saved their money and not bought spices. Correct? They were expecting to find a dead body because he's been dead for three days. That makes him dead, dead, dead. <laughs> Come on, right? They look into the tomb his body's gone. It, nowhere in scripture does it say that when they looked into the tomb, they saw the body gone. And then you can read this in multiple different books of the Bible. There's actually an angel there. And an angel says, oh, who are you looking for? Jesus. <laughs> We're in his tomb. Oh, he's not here. He is risen. And still, they don't believe. They don't believe. They thought that someone had stolen the body. Come on. And this belief that Jesus was dead, dead, dead ended the revolution. It ended this movement that they were in. They had created a movement called The Way. These saints who followed Jesus, they were part of this group called The Way. And with Jesus dying, The Way was over. The movement was dead. The disciples had no intention on moving forward in The Way, in this revolution, without their leader. They had no intention. It was done. It was over. Man, that was fun. That was great. That was exciting. We saw some great miracles. But now Jesus is dead, dead, dead. How do we know that they did not believe the angels? How do we know that they were done with the movement? Well, John 20, verse 19 says, on the evening of that first day of the week. So his tomb is empty in the morning. Mary, Mary, and that other person, go and tell everybody. Like, you ladies are crazy. Someone stole him. So that same night, the morning they find it empty, that night, when the disciples were together, they were in a house with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. If you believed that your leader was alive, you're not hiding in a locked house. If you believed that your leader, 
the leader of your revolution, raised from the dead. Now that's a big miracle. You're going to go out into the streets. You're going to proclaim it like you had been proclaiming the gospel. But they didn't. They hid in a locked house. They believed that the Lord was dead and that they were next. They're coming for us next. And they're hiding in fear. And I just love how Jesus rolls. Uh, if, if you come to my church, you know that I believe that Jesus and God are fun. I don't believe that they're all that serious. If we thought Jesus and God were really that serious, we wouldn't have created a play. Like, if you think God's all that serious, then you gotta go to a boring church. Come on, I'm just saying. But I love how Jesus rolls. I love how crazy he is sometimes. Watch, these dudes are hiding out in a house. They got the shutters closed. They got the doors locked. And watch, John 20, verse 19. Jesus then came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Why did he have to say, peace be with you? Because my man just walked through the wall. <laughs> he just showed up in the room. He had no key. He had no way in this room. He's like, bam. Ah! Peace. Chill, yo. Chill. I kind of think he's like, gotcha. <laughs> Why are you afraid? It's me. And they're like, no, it's a ghost. And he's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look, here's the scars on my wrist. Here's the scars on my finger. Put your finger in my side. And until this moment, until this very moment that they touched his body, they did not believe he was alive because this story is unbelievable. It's an unbelievable story. Even the disciples who were told it was going to happen didn't believe it. Luke 24, 44 tells us this. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still alive. Guys, this is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to die, but three days later, I'm going to rise again. They can tear down this temple, and it will be, re be rebuilt in three days. This is what I was saying. Watch. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. He's like, I told you multiple times that I must go to the Father, but I'll send you another. And I taught you this in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And what these were, were these were like holy passages, holy scriptures, uh, sacred writings that, he, that Jesus would teach out of. They were like the Bible before the Bible. The Bible before the Bible were these laws of Moses and the sacred writings. I told you this, but here's the turning point. He says, I told you about this. I told you this was going to happen. Luke 24, 48 says this, though. And you are witnesses of these things. I told you it was going to happen, but today you're a witness that it happened. You're a witness that it actually happened. You're a witness that you felt my flesh, you felt my body, and I am alive. This is the moment that the world is turned upside down. And he says this to them. Not only are you a witness to see this, but you're a witness to go tell this. Ooh. You're not just witnessing me alive, but you're to go witness I am alive. You've seen it firsthand. I'm going to tell you guys something. We don't read the Bible and believe the Bible because it's just some written, written words. We believe the Bible because it was written through men who witnessed these things firsthand. We remember their stories. These men and women were witnesses to something that we would share beyond our lifetime. The resurrection of Jesus, the resurrection, listen, get this, the resurrection of Jesus 
created Christianity and launched the church. The cross did not. I know that we love talking about the old rugged cross. I know that we love wearing jewelry of crosses. But the cross wasn't the moment of victory. The cross was the moment of payment. It, it, it was a moment of death. It, it was actually a moment of failure in the eyes of the disciples. They had lost. It's in the resurrection that Christianity is launched. It's in the fact that a God is not dead, but he's alive. The resurrection means to all of us that there is life after death. That's the hope that we believe on. That's the hope that we come to a church for, is that there is a life after death and a resurrection of Jesus proves that. Our God has the power to call those things which were dead back to life again. The resurrection turned the world upside down. And I need to tell you this today, if you're watching online or in the room, you are witnesses to this truth. You are witnesses to this truth. At his death, everyone gave up. It was over. Dreams were done. Nobody expected nobody in the tomb. Let me say it again. That's genius. <laughs> nobody expected nobody in the tomb. Nobody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's not what they expected, but it's what they saw. It's what they experienced. They saw and they experienced something different than expected. Expected versus experienced. They expected one thing, they experienced something else. I wanna say this to you tonight, that you have experienced something different. Some of you in here tonight, you haven't been in a church ever. Some of you haven't been in church since you were a kid because it was such a horrible experience. Some of you watching online, you would never step foot in a church. But tonight, you can experience something different. The difference is that we're learning and we're talking and we're experiencing a living God, not a dead story. This is gonna be an Easter message different than probably any Easter message you heard because I don't want this Easter message ending about Jesus. I want this Easter message ending about you. What have you experienced from God? What have you experienced from God? We've actually even set up a little interview booth out in the lobby for anybody who's bold enough to do it, asking what brought you to church and what did you experience? There's gonna be people in here tonight or watching online that the only reason why you would even step foot or turn us on is because someone from your family was in the show. Other than that, you have no interest whatsoever. Others, you've been searching for something different. You've been looking for a truth. What is your story? What is your story? What is it? What is it? about a hope of a God? What is it of a hope in Jesus? What is it about a hope in heaven that draws you to search? This Easter, instead of simply coming to a church service because it's Easter and it's what we do, 
And funny, we, we have a name for people who come to church on Christmas and Easter only. We call them Creasters. <laughs> We're not poking any fun. We just know there's people who come to church Christmas and Easter, Creasters. And, and so this message is to Creasters. I challenge you. I challenge you this Easter. We just heard a, a, a song called The Greatest Story Ever Told. He's the greatest story ever told, right? What about if you told the greatest story never told? Wonder if you told your story. What's your story? What's your story? Why are you the way you are? Some people we ask, why are you happy? Others we ask, why are you sad? Why are you full of joy? Why are you angry? What's What's your story? Who knows your story? Who's heard your story? Who's heard the story of why you believe in Jesus? Who's heard your story of why you've come to family church? The greatest story never told might be your testimony. I wonder who in your family needs to hear your story, your faith story. I got to sit in on a testimonial on Thursday night in our Celebrate Recovery program. I got to hear somebody stand up and give their testimony, their life story, and I tell you, man, I sat back and you know, part of the story made me cry, like I can't believe some of the stuff that, we, that, that people have been through and then to see where they are today. But there's life change in your story. There's life change in your story. Who needs to hear your story of salvation? How will God, let me ask you this today, how will God use your story to turn this world upside down? How will God... Use your story to turn this world upside down. I want to make this pitch to you tonight. If you've never had an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in that way, maybe maybe Jesus isn't part of your family story. Maybe you would be a first-generation believer. Maybe you were raised in a family that had some form of religion, but it was so abusive that you ran away from it. Man, I can understand. I can understand. Maybe you could experience something different than expected. Maybe you could accept a loving, caring, uh, over-the-top giving God into your life this Easter. Maybe you could be that first-generation believer that set your family off in a different path, and your family name has a different story. If you're here today, and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd like to offer that to you today. But here at Family Church, we love you so much that we pray that prayer together. So everybody in this room, everyone online, everyone in our overflow rooms upstairs, pray this with us. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. I was supposed to walk out here with two books, but I left them over here on the stand. So let me grab them real quick. Two seconds. I won't do that tomorrow. We have a couple books. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you just type AMEN in all capital letters in one of the chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to follow up with you and send you this six-day devotional called Starting Point. It gets you started in your walk with Jesus Christ. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor of celebrating you for two seconds? I won't embarrass you. I just want to like air high five you. Anybody in here tonight pray that prayer for the very first time? Could you just wave at me real quick? Anybody at all? Real quick. Yeah, man. I see you. Anybody else real quick? I see you. Anybody? Anybody in our online rooms? Go ahead and wave your hand at somebody. All right. 
We have these starting point books ready to go. If you raise your hand, they're right out in the lobby at the Welcome Center. Go ahead and let somebody know you raise your hand. We'd love to give this to you. If you're uh, uh, kind of on the fence, you're like, man, you know what? The musical's kind of cool, but I'm not sure about that pastor shirt. It's too bright. Shouldn't wear something like that in church. I get it. I know. <laughs> yeah, whoo. Hey, Commons. We've got this book at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity, what we believe here. We published this book right in-house, uh, just talking about what we believe here. And at the end of the book, there is a, the same exact prayer that we just prayed. If you're just kind of on the fence and saying, I'm not really sure about the whole church thing, if it's for me or the God thing, but you're in a moment of life where you're like, but, the, but I have to search for something. There needs to be a truth. I'd love you to grab this book. It's at the Welcome Center on the way out. Amen, let's go ahead and pray. And then our team has one last song for you. Father, we thank you tonight that we believe your word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for this Easter that you were here, that you spoke to us. We thank you for lives changed, hearts renewed. We thank you, Lord, as we leave here that we're protected and safe. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen.